So today we're talking about money, specifically how to budget your money to make sure you are covering your expenses as well as have a little left over to, well, enjoy life. I'm going to show you how I budget my money within Notion, but you can use any software that allows you to make a spreadsheet, but I just use Notion. But before we jump into my whole spreadsheet, I want to explain the kind of budget that I use. So I use a zero-based budget, and I'm just going to read the definition for you off a of nerd wallet. Zero-based budgeting is a method that has you allocate all of your money to expenses, savings, and debt payments. The goal is that your income minus your expenses equals zero by the end of the month. And that's how I set up my budget. The budget you see in this video is loosely based off, off of my own budget, but I obviously didn't give away all of my financial information. Also, I want to make a big disclaimer for one, I am not a financial advisor, as well as I wanted to be very transparent with you, the viewer, that I do live my, with my parents at the moment, so the rent that I currently pay is nowhere near the rent I would pay in Southern California, say if I had my own, own apartment or was living with a roommate. So I just wanna be clear. All right, let's get into Notion. So right here, I have a template open, which I actually found within Notion's very useful, very brilliant template gallery. Um, I'm sure there's others to fit your tastes and your needs, um, but this one is very basic, very simple, and that's why I liked it. Uh, I will go through kind of the columns and how it's set up uh, real quick. So right here on this very first column, I have description. So basically I'm inputting here. So at the top, I have my income. So your day job, whatever your job may be. And then below you'll see the expenses and we'll get into that later. I'm just going through the columns first. And the next column is for where your budget is going to go. So this is where you're going to be inputting numbers. And then for me, I have the due date. Again, I think a big part of budgeting is not so much knowing where your money's going, but when that money needs to go to a specific account or to pay for a specific thing because you don't want to be late on your payments. And lastly, I have category. And as I said, I use a zero-based budget. So a very important integral part of using this kind of budget is to start out with what you make each month. So just for this example, I am saying that this person makes $2,500 a month. What you wanna do, whether you are doing it in Notion or any other spreadsheet, is that you want to set up a formula within the spreadsheet so that the numbers you put in for your expenses subtract from your total monthly income. So here in Notion, they make it super easy for you. You don't have to input any silly little formulas like you would do in Excel, but again, to each their own. All you have to do is go down here, go to the budget column, go to the very bottom, and you'll see this little calculate button light up, um, be grayed out. All you have to do is click the drop down menu and you see all these options here. For this one, you wanna choose sum. And you might think like, oh, I thought we we're subtracting from our monthly income. Why are we, why are we using sum? we're getting right to that. The first thing you wanna do when you're laying out your expenses, so like seeing out what you wanna pay for is first name those things. So I already laid out kind of, again, it's very loosely based off of my own expenses. I put rent, because again, I don't pay that much to my parents, but it's still a, something that I have that's taken out of my paycheck every month and given to my mom. <laughs> And then I have Netflix, I have car insurance, my student loans, my phone, my car payment. Um, I actually do have a Roth IRA. You'll see in this example, I am gonna mimic it, mimic my own contribution. If you don't know what a Roth IRA is, I'm not gonna speak to it at length, but it's a retirement fund, it's an investment. One day when I'm like 60, I can take out the assets and it compounds interest over time. And the only thing I want to say about that is that if you are 20 something, let's say 25, it's not so much how much you are contributing every month or every year. 
the fact of the matter is, when it comes to any investment, the earlier you can do it, the better. Uh, but that's all I'm going to say about like that, because again, I'm not a financial advisor. And then we have Adobe Creative Cloud. Okay, so hello. I'm a content creator, filmmaker, gotta pay, pay that, pay that ransom every month. <laughs> Notion. I pay for Notion. Um, Roth IRA, again, um, I contribute money every, I think, the 15th and like the 30th of the month. So it, it just takes out automatically, which we'll talk about later, automatic and manual pay payments. YouTube Premium. And then lastly, I have a savings category. And for this example, I put $50 a week. So basically $50 from every paycheck should be, is, will be allocated to your savings account. All right, so we went through basically the description of each bill, subscription, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're actually going to skip over here to the category to, um, and the, again, a category is exactly what it suggests to make sure you know, like, okay, this is a bill. So a bill usually won't change. Um, that's something that you're probably going to pay for unless you pay off your house, you pay off your car, whatever it is, you're but it's always gonna be there. Um, a subscription is obviously just that. If you wanna cancel your Netflix, you can do it anytime. You'll have that extra $15 in your pocket every month. For me, since I am paying off my student loans, it is debt, so showing that, okay, I'm paying off debt. And then with my Roth IRA, I have an investment um and then i have savings just so i know that i am putting money away for myself i am paying myself first um and i think this is important too because for one you know where your money's going two you see like if money gets tight one month you know we think we know things happen we know we can easily okay i can go out without netflix i can go without notion or youtube premium or you know what have you whatever it is that you're subscribed to or you can even decide like, oh, maybe I can really pay off my car um, within the next few months or within this year and then you won't have that car payment anymore. So on and so forth. It's just important to know where you have flexibility. Uh, and then here due date, again, I think it's self-explanatory, just making sure you know when your bills are due so you're not making any late payments, you're not um, missing it and you, your lights won't get turned off. Uh, you'll notice here, as I mentioned before, is that more often than not, my payments are automatic, but these asterisks, at least this is how I decided to denote them, my rent, my student loans, my phone, and my car payment at the moment are manual payments, and that's for a reason. For one, I really just transfer money to my mom's account every first of the month. Uh, student loans, you can set up an auto payment. And again, if you are just paying the minimum money every month and to make sure that you're not forgetting, I think that's probably the best course of action. But for me, I'm being pretty aggressive with my loan payments. So I have budgeted um, an amount of money to pay off my loans every month. And then again, it is much higher than my minimum payment because again, I'm trying to pay it off sooner rather than later. But yeah, I would just suggest rule of thumb is that if you can make it automatic, that's a, again, probably the best course of action because you won't have to worry about it anytime. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, just like seeing how this budgeting works and seeing how, what, why, for one, it's important to how it can give you kind of flexibility. And also it's exciting to see that even after you have paid off all your bills, you still have a little bit of money to go out have fun, buy boba, buy a skateboard, whatever it is. So I'm just gonna go through this pretty quick. I'm just gonna, again, loosely mimic my own budget, what I pay for each um, thing that I just mentioned here. So for rent, rent in quotes, I actually pay my mom, and this is actually true to life, $200 every month. So. Okay, this is very important. Since we had the sum down here, we want to make sure there is a minus, a subtraction symbol in front of each of these amounts because it's subtracting from our monthly budget. And again, the goal is for one, and usually when people do a zero-based budget, basically you want this to go down to zero, but I'll tell you why I don't do that at the very end. 
but essentially we're just subtracting from our monthly income so let's continue doing it all right netflix and and i personally just round up if it's like a 15.99 charge i just do 16 dollars because i personally just like round numbers 16 dollars car insurance i pay like 90 dollars because <laughs> i'm high risk okay student loan so as i said i've been paying pretty aggressive so i know i might get some flack for since i don't pay rent but this is why i'm living with my parents and why where like that money that rest of that money goes i'm paying at least and again i'm not doing this super true to life but i'm paying at least a thousand dollars a month on my student loans because again i would like to be free of that debt as soon as i can if you're curious i'll probably be free of my student loans by the end of 2021 and i graduated in 2018 and in the grand scheme of things that's really fast um it's not to brag but just knowing that's that's one of my financial goals for for myself okay and you see my sum sum down here is going down but it's okay because these are things that i need Roth IRA, currently I'm only contributing about $100 a month. Or, so this one is 50 because right now my investments aren't my priority. It was just important that I started investing early. So I started investing about two years ago when I was 24. And obviously, maybe not obviously, but when I'm more debt free, when I'm more debt-free, when I'm debt-free, I will allocate more money towards my investments, if that makes sense. And then Notion is only $5 a month, and I love that. It's probably the best $5 I spend every month. And then savings. Again, um, a big financial, personal finance, I think, rule is that you should always pay yourself first. And what they mean by that is every paycheck you should first give yourself a chunk of change and again I, I think this could differ from person to person but i usually just put it into my savings so in this example every paycheck you put 50 dollars away in your savings account for a rainy day so we'll do here so 50 dollars per paycheck per week i get paid weekly thankfully so that's going to be 200 dollars per month maybe it's not super budget related but again it's just a personal finance tip is that you should have at least and again i'm, I'm speaking mostly to us 20 something year olds who don't make a lot of money yet or if you do great for you happy for you but you know it's it's hard it's hard times out here have at least one month's worth of expenses saved you know that number anyways you know that number so just again have an emergency fund or even just having an emergency fund of a thousand dollars i think is a good rule of thumb it's just again it's for emergencies it's just you know if your car breaks down or you do need medical care it's just when life happens you have at least a little bit of a cushion so that you're not set back you're not put into debt you don't go into the negative um in your bank account and i think that's just a good rule to live by and I definitely do have that in place. Lastly, again, the reason my zero based budget is a little different, especially since it is laid out so nicely here in Notion is that this right here is the money I have left over each month. I could add another category, another expense if I wanted to. For instance, I could maybe put like a gas category. Um, I could put like a grocery category or whatever and then Again, as long as it doesn't exceed uh, $573, I can put that in there. But essentially anything you have left over in this some little sum box right here, um, you can spend it on whatever you need. And again, I would say essentials first, but once you've paid off all the essentials and you have enough money for all the essentials, then use it to enjoy life. And I think the last thing I want to leave you with is that the cool thing about this is for one, it makes you more mindful about your spending. You know where your money's going. 
And also, as I said, you can make adjustments at any time. So maybe you need to cancel a subscription. Maybe you're being less aggressive with your student loan payments, or maybe you do have a goal of paying off your car. So you up those payments, you know, whatever it is, just adjust it to your own life. But at least every month, you know, come the first of the month, you know, okay, I have enough money to do this, this, and this. And then the even better part of that is that you know you have enough money to save up for that new camera or what have you and at the end of the day even though i do not believe money can buy us happiness at least not any sustaining happiness it definitely does help us live our most intentional life and i wish that for all of you all right youtube i'm marissa rojas i'm a filmmaker from san diego california and i hope to help you the self love first. Alright, take care. Ciao.